Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Faith Fellowship's Daily Word of Encouragement. You know, I've decided to use this medium that we have, this uh, morning update, to use it to speak to the congregation and share a little bit about what God's putting on my heart in the direction I think He wants me to begin to take this church. One of the many things I want to share is my own thoughts, something about me personally and what I'm feeling. And I'm going to read that to you from Matthew's Gospel in chapter 23. And here's what it says. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I read that to say, with this position, I believe, goes a lot of responsibility. And it's a very high honor. And what I want to communicate to you today is that I interpret that honor to mean that I am your servant. That this season, wherever God has me and what He has me doing right now, I'm going to use it to serve you as a body. I want to do some things in our Sunday services and other videos about things that are important and things that are on my heart. First of all, I want your worship experience to be fantastic at Faith Fellowship. I, it always has been, and I only want it to increase. And here's why. I want what happens in our sanctuary to happen in your home. I want your own personal worship experience to develop where you don't need everybody else around, the crowd or the music. All you need is a heart's desire to worship God. I want worship to be more than just a Sunday experience. I want you to take it everywhere you go. I want to teach the Bible in such a way that it transforms your life so that you have the Bible as your guide in your decision making, the things you do, the things you don't do. I want the Bible to be really alive for you so that you will use it to be your guide, and it'll also be fun reading for you. I love reading the Old Testament because it gives me examples of how others lived their lives. Some of the things they did that were extraordinary, excellent, but it also reveals how traps are set by the devil and how he uses them to bring God's servants, bring them down. And so I want to talk about those kind of things. I want you to bring your Bibles on Sunday. I want you to bring a pencil and paper. I want you to be able to take something home and apply it. The whole book of Proverbs is about wisdom. And I want you to learn what wisdom is and why God gave it to us and why it's so important and vital for people to use it. Because we're always in the decision-making process. Every day requires a decision. And so when you can do that based on God's wisdom, I promise you, your life will be headed in a great direction. So these are the things I want to talk to you about. I want us to develop and grow, and I want us to enjoy church. I want your church experience to be just top notch. I want you to really like the building that we have and that we use and that you worship in. For you to look around and like what you see. Um, it's never been that it wasn't. I just want to find ways to enhance that. I want it to be uh, a building that you're proud of and the, the grounds that you're proud of. And when you point to your church, you're proud to say, that's where I attend. Those are the kind of things I have in my mind, in my heart. And I believe they're from the very heart of God because he cares about an obedient lifestyle. He cares about us living lives that are pleasing in His sight. And I want to be a part of that experience in your life. There are some things that I'm going to ask of you. I, you know the volunteer spirit. You know what it's like to have people that are ready and available to do whatever the mission calls for, to be there serving on those special occasions when we need you as a church because we really serve people. That's why we are there to serve God's people. And then to unbelievers, when they walk into the place, I want them to feel safe. I want them to feel like they are accepted. You know, uh, one of the discussions we had many times over many years 
of the way people dress when they come to church. And there was an example once about a young woman who came in who was dressed pretty risque, I guess you could call it. But what some may have not stopped to think about was she came to church and maybe she wore what she had. Or maybe she's just in a place where she has to be taught how to dress modestly or we're trying to teach that model. So I'm simply saying to all of us that not only do we want to be uh, treated well, accepted and appreciate our environment, we want to do the same thing for other people. We want to make their experience at Faith Fellowship memorable. And I know I'm just saying a lot of things right now because there's a lot of things on my heart, but I want you to be a part of what God is doing. Now, God says in that same passage I just read to you that a person that humbles themselves, especially a servant leader, God will exalt. But when a servant leader uh, exalts himself, God will humble them. And I think I want to use the example of humility, therefore allowing God to exalt me or you to the level that he chooses. So humility is a very important point in Christianity. It's a very important practice and principle to follow as you develop in your faith. The way we treat people is vital. Um, I've heard really, really good reports about how people say their experience at Faith Fellowship is and was. Then I've also heard where people were a little bit disappointed coming to church and made to feel maybe a little less than. Uh, and that's not pointing a finger of accusation to anybody. It's just to say that I want to bring these kinds of things to the forefront so that we recognize that we're always being watched and the things we do are important because it makes a difference in people's lives and how they view Christianity. You know, someone once said, I don't want to hear a Christian. I want to see one. And so what they're saying is we talk Christianese very, very well. But sometimes our example of Christianity is not one that others might want to follow. So therefore, I'm saying let's be very conscious of how we treat people, how we minister to people. This is something I'm going to ask of you. Uh, for those of you who listen to this video or hear this one, I'm going to read to you from the book of 1 Peter. And I'm going to pick up in chapter 4 where it says, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer, offer hospitality. You know, hospitality is something that you have to extend to people. It's something that it's not just readily available. It's something you do. It is noticeable. It's a verb. It, it's taking action is what Peter's talking about. He says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. It's uh, really interesting that he had to add that. You know, I'm tired of serving these people. I'm tired of doing all these nice things for people. Nobody ever does anything for me. He's saying, when you offer hospitality, do it without grumbling. He says, each of you, and I'm speaking to every one of you with the, within the sound of my voice, use whatever gift you have received. Remember, a gift is something that was given to you. It's not something that you generated on your own. It was a gift to you. And God is saying, whatever that gift is that you have received, he said, use it to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. So those are some of the things that are on my heart that I want to pass on to you about 
the future as I see God unfolding it in my eyes and in my heart. I want our church experience to be great. I want our church experience to be fruitful. I want your church experience to be something that you're more than happy to talk about with others. I want the name of Jesus held in high regard. And that is accomplished by you serving him with excellence and you setting a godly example that people want to know what is the, is the reason for the hope that you have in Christ. That's what I want to do. So as we move forward, I'll continue to use this medium as long as, as I think it's necessary uh, for talking about our future as a church and as a people. And I just pray that you pray for me and I for you. And let's see what God will do in this next season of life. I'm excited. Um, uh, whatever God, whatever you want to do, that's where I am. Whatever that may be, God, I offer myself to you. And I'm asking you to take that attitude. God, use me. If you can use anything, then use me. May God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.